Hafide, and welcome to this special edition of CNMI Decision 2024. I'm your host, Tomas Manglonia, and we are at the wonderful cafe, Hafa Bean, where they have great drinks, food, and company. And this is where a lot of local people and tourists visit to have maybe some of the types of conversations we're going to be having today. So thank you so much to Hafa Bean for what they do to our community, for our community, and also for allowing us to um, be here today and film this interview uh, where we're talking with the young voters of the CNMI, ages 18 to 35, the important voting block where in this midterm election, we've spoken to candidates who say that's who they're targeting and want to show up at the polls in November. And so we'll start with a few introductions. We do have one of our panelists online on Zoom who we'll show you in a second. So maybe Savannah, we'll just start with you. Introduce yourself, uh, maybe how old you are, and uh, a bit of uh, any background you want to share with the Saipan community and the Marianas community watching. Hi, everyone. Hafede Tiro. My name is Savannah De Los Santos. I am 27 years old. Um, and in terms of background, I do wear multiple hats. So I am still the current reigning Miss Northern Marianas. I also work as a sexual assault response team manager here at the Northern Marianas Coalition Against Domestic and Sexual Violence. However, I will say that a lot of the views that I will have today is definitely not a representation of the organizations that I'm part of, but definitely just a, a representation of me as an individual. All right, Gio. Uh, half a day done here, everybody. My name is Bonnie Giusagana. I am 19 years old. I am a student at the Northern Marianas College under the major of social work as well as nursing, and I am the Associated Students of the Northern Marianas College president. I do also want to state that any reflection that I give throughout this conversation is not a reflection of my own um, institute that I'm in, but just my personal uh, judgment as well. Thank you. Okay, well, hi um, to all to all all of our fans in Guam and and CNMI. I, I I'm Ignacio and I'm 30 years years old. So I'm the oldest one <laughs> among the amongst the uh, three of us. Um, I am a speech therapist and I am uh, very fortunate to have this chance to speak and to be and to be to be amongst these these one these wonderful folks. Um, and as um, as the uh, previous uh, two speakers said, I all that I'm going to share re represent my my views. It does not um, represent my work. It does not represent the um, folks that I work for, but my own views. All right. Thank you all for those disclosures as well. <laughs> I know it's sometimes difficult to speak so openly, but thanks for joining the conversation. And so. Yeah. Uh, again, we're not here to talk necessarily about who you're supporting or what party you're a part of. Uh, we want to hear about the issues that matter to you. So uh, here's the first question. It's a big question. Uh, what issues matter to you in this election? Uh, and when you head to the polls in November, uh, some of you, I believe, are first time voters. Others might have voted, uh, voted before. Um, but what issues come to mind that you hope candidates discuss in the field? And uh, maybe uh, Savannah, since you're online, we'll go ahead and just start with you again. Okay. Um, there are a lot of issues that definitely matter to me. Um, I know that when it comes to the work that I do, it's kind of everything that I drink, um, eat, breathe, and live. And so I work a lot with sexual assault and domestic violence and teen dating violence. Um, I definitely speak from a survivor advocate point of view when I say this, but the issues of sexual assault, sexual harassment, domestic violence, teen dating violence, child abuse and neglect, those are definitely issues that are super important to me. Um, I really believe that it really starts in the home. And oftentimes when it comes to trauma and how it's passed on, it plays a huge role in our community if we care about those issues. If we're addressing um, issues like sexual assault or domestic violence, I mean, even in terms of research and statistics, the numbers are really high. Um, so I believe it is like one in three women will experience some form of violence in their life. And I believe one in six men. And so even in terms of that, there are a lot of people within our CNMI community who are victims, who are survivors. Um, and I just really want to have people who are in office who care about those people and care about their well-being and just trying to get them the support that they need. All right, Ignacio, maybe we'll go to you next. Sure. So I I really thought about about this and I came up with the three three S S's. 
schools, sa safety, and salakbi. Schools because um, I just love school, and I don't want to think about where I would be had it not been for the for the schooling that I've received and all that I that I have gone I've gone through and learned. And so, I believe that um, who whoever wins in these in these elected seats. I want them to support our schools because the more that our kids um, receive those experiences and those skills, and um, the more that they learn, then they will grow up and become the work the workforce that we will need to bring the the CNMI into the future. Um, and that and that that, ha that happened with with us, right? We had all we all had gone through a school, and we've all um, achieved so much. And we've you we use those skills now to help to help those around us. And that's my that's that's my wish for the young kids now. For safe safety, every time Tom, I I open up my news apps and I look at the news from around the world. And it breaks my heart when I see news of um, crimes, of you know things that are just um, going really hor horribly wrong in the world. And every time I look at those head those headlines, and every time I you know read those um, pieces of news, it makes me feel grateful that I still feel safe here. This is home. This is where I I live, and I love being being here. But more than that, I feel safe here. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to think that I wanted to leave and live elsewhere, but with the current um, state of the world now, I would I very much want to stay here because I feel safe safe here. And then the last S, Salakbi. Oh, we've heard time and time again. We need revenue. We need more funding to help our economy thrive. And you know, I've been following the new the news a lot about IPI and then the flights, a huge um, concern with the flights and how that affects us. And our um, elected ofi officials now are trying to find ways to divert diversify, you know, um, our our revenue stream. And so Although these three um, that r resonated with me have transcended throughout the throughout the years, um, I still feel that there's still a lot of work to be done. There has been a lot of work done, and the C the CNMI has come a long way, and I'm so proud of our home. But there's always room to grow, always room to improve, always room to thrive, and whoever will win these seats this um, this election. I hope that they are up to the task. I hope that they are all set to take on the challenges, and I hope that they have plans um, to overcome to overcome these. And Eugio, what issues matter to you this election? So, with the background that I hold, as well as the the many hats that I wear for the institute that I'm in, I'm a very very strong advocate for. Uh, Continuing uh, the support for higher education, a lot of our students right now, they feel the need to find higher education elsewhere. You know, it's really hard for, not only for us to see students and our people leave the island, but it's just difficult to see that the, the options that we have here on the island are just not taken seriously. And that may have to do with the different financial stabilities that we're having issues with. It might be the funding that we're having, but I definitely believe that um, the government plays a really strong role in the way that they support these um, institutes. And if we continue to give the institutions um, the needed support that they have, we can continue to reach out to the students who are in our different uh, school systems and to just show them that the CNMI has options for them without having to leave the island or... And you know, leaving the island can be a bigger thing. It can affect our economic status and things like that. But another issue that I feel uh, very strongly and personally about is the way that we've um, we've handled uh, different contract workers and touchbacks that has affected them. I have family, I have friends who have been affected by the touchback, and it's hard to see different 
children have to see their parents go away or leave the island for a couple months um, let alone weeks um, so it's difficult to see them have to you know just go through that and then have to go through processes just to come back and see their children so I think it's time that we take a better approach and view on this and then continue to develop through that and, right, and Tom and, and, and if I if I may add to to that these folks who have come here to help our our community grow um, the folks that are being sent home because of the touchback, these are the folks that help build and help help the the uh, CNMI grow. And so, you know, I feel the same the same way where I when I hear stories of you know um, folks having to go home just for that for that bit, it right. makes me feel feel sad because then these are our friends, right. these are our loved ones, these are the folks that we see every day and say hi or hoy te hi, you know, <laughs> um, these are the folks that we see. And then um, when they're sent home, the first thing on our on on our minds, well at least on my mind is. When are they coming back? Right. Because I miss seeing, seeing seeing them, so I do feel the same way. Right, right, right. I do feel the same way. And, and Savannah, we'll start with you again uh, for this next question. Um, do you and your peers talk about election or the or politics? If not, why? And if yes, uh, what do you talk about? Because I feel like uh, we hear it all the time that sometimes our our popul uh, our age demographic isn't as engaged. Maybe so. Um, yeah, what what does that look like in your friend circles? Um, you know, we actually do talk a lot about politics and every single time people are running for certain positions. Um, and this just goes not only here within the CNMI, but also just like in within the entire U.S. Um, and I, I feel that even with the conversation of politics, oftentimes when people are saying that they're running, for me personally, I definitely look at a lot of the videos that they promote, a lot of the information that they promote, whether it's on social media. I know that, Tomas, you have been doing a lot of interviews, so I've definitely been keeping up to date with that. And so those are conversations that I have with my peers. Um, we often talk about what they are promoting, what their whole campaign is about, who they are as people and whether or not they are consistent in their messaging or if they're consistent if they've been in office before. Um, but it definitely does take a huge amount of our discussion. But I would have to say that it probably just started like over the past few years. I don't think I really talked a lot about politics or really understood a lot about politics and elected officials um, until I was I would say probably in this specific work when I came back to the CNMI, so within the last like three to five years. Um, but prior to that, not as much, but now for sure, definitely. And I, I have to say that I really believe that it's because within our or within my peers, we talk a lot about it because a lot of the issues that we see, whether it's in the work that we're doing or just overall in the community, a lot of it can really be at least close to solved with more support from elected officials um, and just more engagement from them. I know that oftentimes when people are, are in positions, like I compare it a lot to the Miss Mariana's role, like sometimes even originally with Miss Mariana's, oftentimes people didn't want me to speak. They would just take pictures with me. It was like enough for me to just take a photo and post it on social media. But you know, now as I get older, these positions you have a lot of people who watch you like every single day. There are people who really look up to you. And if you you utilize those platforms to promote a really, really important heartfelt message there, there's a lot that can happen within the CNMI community. And uh, Gio, uh, what are the conversations like at NMC, I guess? Right. So, you know, when it comes to my my generation and the demographic that I usually am around, it's usually a divide a lot of there's there's certain groups that want to talk about it and then there's other groups who are like oh i don't want that to be a reflection of who i am in your eyes but uh with with that when we have these meaningful conversations with our peers it's very very important that we don't let that affect the way that we view the person um for for us we do make these conversations because we know that um my generation especially, we're more outspoken. We have, the, the usage of social media is a very, very strong thing. And a lot of uh, people in this generation now are utilizing social media to find, to advocate for things that they feel are more important to them and to continue to um, 
just speak up for things that are right and um, vital to the way that they want to live here in the CNMI. And even if we don't have these conversations with our peers, we're able to create those connections where we understand that the way that we vote or the people that we vote for are not who uh, defines the person as well. So, yeah. And for me, um, to be very truthful, when I started voting at the young age of, uh, of, of 18, mm. uh, I didn't really care. At that time, I didn't really care. I just cared that I needed to register to vote because I needed the um, Shefa mm. and CNMI um, funding um, to go to school. So I just had to register and that, and that was that. Um, but it wasn't until recently that I started to become more aware of how import, important the, the, the political land, landscape is in our everyday lives. And so I started to listen more and to read more and to re, re, research more. And it was, I think, the, election, the presidential election of 2020 that I really became um, involved in becoming aware and becoming informed. Now, my mindset has changed where um, I'm more than willing to hear the other side right. of, of, of the aisle. What I find as a concern, Tom, is that in this, in this time, the world has become so divi divisive and divided, where you can have a stance on the same issue, and I can have my own stance, and then we we just break that bridge. Right. I want I want that to change where you can have your stance, I can have mine, but it doesn't mean we have to end our friend our friendship. And we've seen that a lot where po where politics can break up um, friend friendships and break up loved ones, and and it's really really sad because at the end of the day, you know. Speaking here, um, at the end of the of the election, we are one CNMI. Right. Yes. All right. And speaking about friends and loved ones, this next question is about family. Um, does Does your family have an influence on who you vote for? I feel as though there was, you know, uh, kind of that expectation in the past, uh, relatively speaking, about you know, uh, you're part of this family, you're voting this way. So uh, Savannah, again, just starting with you. Yeah, how much influence does your family have on your decision, or is it more of a my vote, my choice type of you know mindset for you? Um, definitely my vote, my vote, my choice. Um, and the reason why I say that is because my family and I have very different views, and I think a lot of it is just based off of what we do every day, the work that we do. Um, just like. Both Gio and Ignacio have mentioned um, a lot of respect comes into play. Like I definitely respect their views and I respect who they choose to vote and support or vote for and support. But at the end of the day, I think it's very important for me to choose what values most to me, just based off of what I see every day, what I value as an individual, the work that I do, um, that definitely carries more weight. Gio? Yeah. Um... I definitely believe that family does play a very big role in the way that we view uh, politics and the way that we view elected leaders who are probably coming into um, their elected positions. I personally think that my, my family can tell me uh, information and different details about a person. They can, they're, free, they're freely able to do that, but like um, Savannah was saying, my vote, my choice. I personally believe that I'm very, very thankful that I'm giving these informations and these details about people. But at the end of the day, I have my own beliefs. I have my own certain doctrines that I want to follow in the way that I feel we can be a better scene of my as a whole. Um, and if I see that in an individual who is running for an elected position, I will be giving them my attention and my vote just so that I know that everyone is included in the way uh, we perceive our future in the CNMI. Yeah. What about you, Ignacio? I don't know if you've heard of what I was referencing before. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> so when I was younger, I can't believe I'm saying that, when I was younger, um, I, I did um, vote according to um, what, um, I, you know, the advice of what those around me had said. Um, right. 
you know, we hear a lot here where, eh boy, you need to vote for si so and so, he's si uncle from si grandma's mm -hmm. side and all that. And yes, I did vote along those lines, but then as I got older and I started to educate myself, that's when I think I became more critical of the people running for these seats. That's where, that's when I started to um, ask them, okay, what is, what is your stance on this? Or if you were to win, and in my case, I'm precinct two, um, if you were to win the, the rep seat, for, pre, for Precinct 2, which is where I live, what is your plan to improve where we live? And what is your plan to help the over, overall C, CNMI progress? And um, there was one candidate uh, in the last election that did come to our house to, um, to collect, um, to have a sign, you know, those, those sheets. And that's when I started to ask him, so what is your plan? What, if you were to win, if, if the election were, were now and you won, what are, what are you going to, to do? And, you know, I heard a lot of, oh, I'm going to do this, this and this. <laughs> and then, you know, for me, I've heard that election in and election out. I've heard these type of, oh, I'm going to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the way to Z. But once they win, they can't even do the first item on their list. And they disappear. When the next election comes around, hey, boy, if I didn't vote for, for, for me, so I, you know, I did this and this. And I'm like, where? When? I never saw you do any of these things. Um, so now in this, in this point in my life, I'm more critical and, want, and wanting to learn more. I want to know who these people are. Before I cast my vote, on election day, I want to say for cert for certain that I learned everything that I that I needed to learn. I know where where they stand on particular concerns. I have an idea of what their plans are. So I so once I cast my my vote, I can I can say to myself, I'm gonna I I will vote for so and so because I think I feel they are the best per person. For the job, um, so that has changed. I've evolved over the the years, um, wanting to make sure that it's me, it's my mm -hmm. vote, meaning my voice, my vote, and not oh because uncle said so or oh my auntie told me to vote for so for for so and so because they grew up in in this place. You know, I want to make sure that um, I still give them that respect to hear them out. But at the end of the day, on ele election day, my vote is between me and the Lord. So, yeah. All right, uh, that's a great segue actually about wanting to know and meet uh, the candidates. So how do you think uh, the candidates should be reaching out to our age demographic? Um, and uh, maybe Gio, we'll start with you and then Savannah, then uh, Ignacio. Yeah. Right, um, so definitely, you know, there, I have some ups and downs and some pros and cons about social media. You know, social media is a great way for, uh, for the youth to learn more about the candidates, but I think it's the meaningful connections that we have in person. Uh, if I, personally, if I see a candidate who steps out of their box and actually takes the time to create maybe events or even things like this, like round tables, where we talk about things that we uh, find important or vital to us, it shows me that the candidate is not only passionate, to do something for the CNMI, but it shows that he is listening to us. You know, there's a lot of issues where we vote for this elected candidate because they're like, oh, I will be a voice for you. But then after they do get elected, what happens? What happens to the voice that you said that you were going to be providing to us? What happens to the platform that you're giving to us as people of the CNMI? If we can't continue to make those connections, how can we ensure that we are creating a better future for us? And how do we just move forward with that, knowing that you don't have the capability to continue to make those connections as well? And, and Savannah, how do you think candidates should reach out this election? Um, I definitely think having a very solidified plan. Um, I know that with a lot of um, just individuals within the community, oftentimes they think that having that touch point is 
enough but i definitely agree with geo it's definitely the plan it's definitely the connection but it's also putting that into a tangible visual like physical form um so that like we understand we know what steps they're going to take we know what they're going to do um but just really like outlining it very very clearly um another thing that i will say because i am going to be a first time seeing my voter um but a lot of that was just due to the fact that, you know, schools that I went to or just people I was around, no one really ever talked about how to vote and how important voting was, um, what, what impacts voting had or my vote had on like the scene of my community. So if elected officials or people who are running just really like make that put that into layman's terms so that everyone can understand, then we'll be able to just address the educational piece as well and hopefully get more engagement after. All right. Uh, just before we get to our last question, did you want to chime in on uh, how people should vote? Yeah. Or reach out, actually. How reach? Yeah. Well, I think it. I think it's both. Um, the points that were just shared were were um great were great points, and I just want to build build on that. I I believe both. So for the can the candidates who um want to reach out, you know, a mix of both face to face and both on and on online. Because there, we can't um, for, forego the fact that this is part of life. This is right. part of life. So if they can uh, find ways to market themselves, market their campaign that is easily accessible to us, that we can just scroll and read and watch um, videos that they post. Mm -hmm. So that way we can refer to, 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 those, um, to those sources that they release. And... I do think that um, ha having them come out and meeting the the people that they're trying to um, get votes from, um, because you know um, here we're all we're all we're all about family and you know friendships, right. and that and that and that is great. And so meeting them, I love spe speaking to the folks who are vying for these jobs because mm -hmm. then I can right then and there ask them. What is your plan? Right. What is your outline? Um, how would how would you address this if you were in in an elected seat right now? Mm -hmm. How would you um, deal with what we're going um, through now? Mm -hmm. um, and way back way back when all I all I had to go off on is the bill the billboards and mm -hmm. those pocket meetings, you know, um, where most of the time I couldn't understand what they were saying um, because I'm not I'm not fluent in in um, in, a ch in ch tomorrow and so a lot of the times I couldn't understand what they were saying um, but now with what with the tech that we have mm -hmm. um, it helps me learn more about them and I know I remember in the left in the last election the um, the news they had those in in certs where it had their where they went to school where mm. um, you know what their plan is or what their experiences are uh, so that's what I want to see again but more um, I would like to see the 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 political teams have websites I want them to have Facebook pages. Because that's how, for those for those of us who do not go up to Cap to Cap Capitol Hill, for those of us who don't go to these um, political events, just because mm -hmm. you know we 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 want to stay um, as Switzerland, <laughs> uh, at least that's that's my way of oh okay so so and so is going to do this, but then so and so is going to do that. Right. Who will I align myself with? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think Savannah wanted to chime in there too, right? Yeah, sorry. I, I also wanted to add, even in terms of like, if they can just pick an issue and know the ins and outs of that issue, like, for example, with sexual assault, there are a lot of issues with sexual assault and sexual harassment. And if they go into their elected or if they win and they just start reviewing policies, laws in place, or maybe just understand like the workforce, how a lot of the partners who um, are addressing sexual assault and sexual harassment, a lot of them are understaffed. So if there are ways that they can support that funding allocations, like, you know, really understanding the ins and outs of that specific issue, even if it's just one issue, but being the face of that issue rather than 
addressing multiple issues because uh, they'll only be able to solve a little bit of all those issues that they're addressing versus if they focus on one and they spend all of their time in office just addressing that specific issue, then there will be a lot more progress as well. All right. And so we just have about three minutes left. So for this next uh, final question, just is I'm, I'm going to ask you to make your 30 second pitch to our peers on why they should vote. Obviously, all of you here are engaged. You agreed to talk because you do have an opinion that you want to express. Um, you're engaged. So, yeah, just quick 30 second pitch to uh, the young fellow young people watching this and why they should vote in November. Um, maybe we'll start with uh, Ignacio, Gio, and then we'll end with Savannah. So your quick pitch. I want to encourage all of all of you who are who are el el eligible to vote to go out there on election day and cast your your vote which is your voice many many many, many of you think that your one vote will 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 not ma matter you are wrong every single vote matters you you and your voice matter so please, for the progress of our home, do your part and vote because that's how we will get things done. That's how we will see change and that's how we will see growth. Your vote. So please, on election day, vote. You guys have the opportunity, the ability to give that one chance where you're able to be a part of the community and just know your worth in the future of the CNMI. I definitely encourage you guys on November to use your voice and to vote uh, for whoever elected official that you want. At the end of the day, this is our own Commonwealth of the Northern Marianas Islands and the people that are representing us in the, um, in the elected official positions is going to continue to give us this opportunity to be the voice of the CNMI. So on November, please remember, even if it's just one vote of yours, it's still a very, very integral part of how we can develop as a uh, better Commonwealth of the Northern Marianas Islands. All right, Savannah. Um, I'm definitely all about education. So the Commonwealth Election Commission has a great website that is super easy to navigate. It is votecnmi.gov.mp. Um, just take a look at it, look at what the process is like, look at what the application process is like to register as a voter if you haven't. Um, but, you know, your voice definitely matters and the people that you vote in office can make great changes if they're people who align with what you believe in. So, yes, your vote matters. Um, education on this matters. And so I encourage you to all vote. All right. We want to thank Savannah, uh, Gio and Ignacio for their time. You can continue to follow our coverage on KUAM.com.